So when we say what the state of the system is, what we mean by that is the way you can describe the state of the system is by describing the macroscopic properties or, or bulk properties of the system that are actually measurable. Let's take a simple example of, of a system that is you or your body basically. So let's say, so that is your system. And if you have to describe the state of the system or state of you, you can actually do that by, by measuring some macroscopic or bulk properties. We don't have to cut you open or dissect you, but something that you can measure um, at the surface and, and determine the, the state of the system. I can measure your weight. So weight is one thing that's easily measurable. So then I can measure your height. I can measure your temperature, body temperature, right? And I can, I can even measure your volume. So I can ask you to take a dip in a tub of water and actually measure the volume of the displaced water and then calculate the volume of your body. So that is a measurable macroscopic or, or bulk property that, that describes the system. So, so you get the idea. So now let's say you have a container filled with gas and you are going to come across this this example again and again in thermodynamics so let's say this is an enclosed um, enclosed container with uh, gas molecules with a gas so to describe the state of the system here so everything else around this is surroundings and this so here the state can be described let's say by measuring the pressure of the gas volume of the gas and the temperature of the gas so these are the different properties the macroscopic or bulk properties of this this system or this gas present in this container that describes the state of the system so so these these macroscopic or the bulk properties measurable properties are called state variables state variables or or state functions And this is a term that you will come across quite a bit in thermodynamics. So similarly, if you were, if the system were just you or your body, the your state variables are all these different properties that you can that you can macroscopically measure. So another important point to remember here is that you don't need a whole lot of properties to uniquely describe the state of the system. Um, that is, you might actually have, let's say, 100 different things or 100 different properties, variables that you can, you can measure um, to describe, you know, your state at that point of time or your body state at that point of time. But I might actually need only three or four properties, minimum number of properties to uniquely describe the state of the system. So there are the, the, that minimum set of properties can be independently varied and the other state functions or the other um, state, uh, state variables can then be derived from these minimum number of state functions. And luckily, we don't have to define the state of the surroundings because, as you know, surroundings exist everything in the universe except the system and there is no way that you can actually uniquely describe the state of the universe or the state of the surroundings because there's so much more happening also, the values of these state variables or state functions are going to depend only on the state of the system at that point of time. So it doesn't matter how those, how that state was obtained or how, how that state was reached. And the state function, uh, the change in a state function depends only on the difference between the initial and final states and not the path that is taken to go from one state to the other. So, so to, to understand that better, I'm going to show you one simple example here. So imagine a person wants to hike up this, this mountain here, and go from the base to the, all the way to the summit. So, so if he or she here is, is athletic enough, is well trained and is physically fit to actually, you know, walk straight up the mountain to the summit, like along this path. So let's, let's call it path A. So let's say the person in green here is not athletic enough, is not well trained. So he or she wants to take the they take this this road that winds gradually from the base to all the way to the top. So so then let's call this path B. 
So one point to note here is if these two hikers have actually started at the same point and they, they, they reach the same point at, at the end, that's the summit, then the net change in the altitude here from base to summit is going to be the same for both path A and path B, both the hikers here. And so altitude here is, is a state function. So it is only going to depend on the starting state of the hiker and the end state of the hiker. And the, the net change in the state function is going to be the difference between the initial and the, and the final states here. So on the other hand, a person actually may or may not carry um, a heavy pack or, you know, they may climb in hot weather or cold weather and depending on all these conditions, their fatigue levels might be different at the beginning and the end of the end of the hike. So they, they, their tiredness, measure of how tired he or she is from this hike, which will depend on which path the hiker is taking, right? So, so fatigue is fatigue is not a state function. It is definitely going to depend on what path the, the hikers take to get to the top. Whereas altitude is clearly a state function. It will not matter which path the hiker takes, but the change in the altitude, as long as they're starting and the final states are the same, their change in altitude is going to be the same. So going back to our example here of a, of a container, an enclosed container with some gas in it, and uh, we said that pressure, volume, and the temperature are the state variables or, or state functions for this for the system here. And we can also have other um, state variables and state functions that can be derived from you know a basic minimum set of uh, independently uh, variable state functions. So uh, so some we will come across a lot of those properties that are state functions and that are not state functions in thermodynamics for systems like this. So um, one such property that is a state function is internal energy, a very very important property of of the system. And the way internal energy is defined, it is defined as uh, sum of kinetic energy and potential energy of all components in the system, of all components in the system. So again, this is a state function. So the, the values of internal energy are only going to depend on the, the, the initial and final states of the system. It doesn't matter how the system goes from one state to the other. And internal energy can be changed either by transfer of heat uh, between the systems and surroundings or by doing work on the system or if, if the system does work on the surroundings. So, so we'll talk more about relationships between work, heat and energy in the, in the next video.